Solodonivkova, Solodon Solodonivkova, Solodon First try, love it. And in 1994, it was the first performance of Phyllis Glass's Philip Glass, your Phillips Glasses, your Philip <laughs> Glasses opera, Phillips Glasses opera, La Belle et la Bête, also known as The Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> and that's your two minute drill. On the Dallas Opera Network, you're listening to Opera Box Score. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Wherever you are, however you're listening, it's America's talk radio show about opera. It's Opera Box Score. I'm your host, Weston Williams, joined this week by Oliver Camacho, Matt Cummings, and Ashley Hardgrave. All right, an NFL defensive end just came out as gay, and we're celebrating pride with a look at gayness in opera. Isn't that a little redundant, Oliver? Plus, in the two-minute drill, we talk about winners in Cardiff and France, but not in Scotland. Stay tuned to find out why. And hey, if you're watching on the Dallas Opera Network, check out the full episode by subscribing to our podcast. And without further ado, who's this new gay football player for Oliver to date? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, both Matt and I put it into our notes because it happened right before we started recording. Would you like to talk about it, Matina Navratilova, or shall I? <laughs> yes, by the time you're hearing this, it's breaking news from three days ago. Uh, but just before we recorded, uh, the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Carl Nassib came out as gay, which makes him the first active NFL player to come out while playing in the league. Well, um, it's in like the he middle of a game. Yeah, it's like he knew this was our topic for tonight. (laughs) Uh, But he's not just talking the talk, guys. He's going to walk the walk because he also announced that he's going to be donating $100,000 to the Trevor Project, which is this amazing organization that aims to prevent suicide among LGBT plus youth. So, you know, we can all snap for that. We absolutely can. You know, we could also snap for the track and field Olympic trials that were all happening this weekend. Who's your favorite right now? Matina, who is it? I got to give my shout out to Allison Felix because she is qualifying for her fifth Olympic Games. She's been on the team for every Olympic since Athens. Uh, (laughs) And this is even just a couple of years after she uh, gave birth to her daughter through a life threatening pregnancy. And I think I read that she's the most decorated women in track and field history and stands a chance to become the most decorated athlete in track and field history. So let's we're pulling for her in Tokyo. I'm nice. worn out just sitting here doing this uh, this hosting position. Let's talk some opera. Chalk Talk on Opera Box Score. So I guess as the resident gay uh, <laughs> on the team, uh, I'm going to introduce this segment. Uh, it is June 2021, believe it or not, and Pride Month is coming to a close. And we just wanted to spend a couple minutes with our dear listeners, with you all, to talk about how gay opera is. <laughs> and, and it goes way back. It really does. It goes as far back as the late 17th century in the court of Louis XIV, where um, the first French opera composer, dubbed opera composer, was none other than the Italian Jean-Baptiste Lully, who was a friend of Louis XIV. They met dancing <laughs> out, you know, as you do. Oh, he, they, were, they were dancing buddies. In the club, with, as with you your, said. With your yes, French exactly. king, pal. <laughs> And uh, shortly after appearing together in some dance, um, Luli was appointed as a court musician of instrumental music. And eventually he w- became the opera composer of France. And nobody else was allowed to compose opera. By law. No yes. one else. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> no, that's not a joke. That's not a joke. <laughs> Um, so the first, you know, French operas, which were really a reaction uh, to Italian opera and a, in a way, a rejection of Italian opera, uh, were composed by an Italian, <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Lully. So we see in opera history that queerness has always been a part uh, from the Castrati and the Haute Contras and their uh, same octave duets, <laughs> which are the sexiest duets um to <laughs> yes uh to uh fake romantic love in uh pearl fishers in the romantic era and the beginning of the modern era with a call back to pants rolls with octavian and the marshallin 
having a wonderful morning together with trombones. Uh, and then we get Benjamin Britten, where our first, you know, out gay composer. They're probably Ronaldo Hahn was also gay, but I forget who comes first. Uh, but you know, we know Britten's operas, we don't know Hahn's operas. And then to the modern era, to one of our favorite composers and a very gay subject matter, Ricky Ian Gordon. There you have it. Opera is gay. The end. <laughs> Oliver has spoken. <laughs> <Yeah>. It is <laughs> law. <laughs> Uh, one thing that is uh, uh, is not law is uh, whether or not uh, Ryan Lochte is going to make it into the Olympics. Oh, um, he's not. That's done. <laughs> he, unfortunately, he finished seventh in the Olympic trials, uh, wow. as, as did Cody Simpson. But, you know, for me, I know we talked a little bit about uh, Matina's picks in track and field. But let me tell you, Shikari Richardson, this is her world. We are just living in it. She is the 21-year-old phenom that's coming in and also also queer, hooray, also fabulous nails and fabulous hair. Not that that has to do with being queer. They just are fabulous. She's very much the, like the Jackie Joyner Kersey, the Flo jo of now. That is who she is. And she is unapologetic and so damn fast. And I'm really excited to watch her. Um, really quickly, did you guys hear about, and this has an opera twist to it too. Um, did you hear about the substance, uh, substance crackdown that's happening in Major League Baseball? No, tell I me didn't. about it. <laughs> I, I should know my audience. Uh, so, okay, so today... <laughs> Today is the very first day uh, of sort of this new rule that's going into effect in Major League Baseball. Uh, pitchers can be ejected and suspended for using illegal foreign substances to doctor their baseball. So basically there's, mm. you know, there's this culture in baseball where they put sticky, sticky substances, sometimes slippery, but mostly <laughs> sticky on baseball so that the pitches will spin faster. Um, and it causes, you know, them to, to go faster, to go faster at, at the batters. But now umpires are going to be able to examine the players right there on the field. They can do it between innings. They can do it between batters. If anybody's found with any sticky substance, like this thing called spider tack that a lot of them use, they can automatically face a 10 day suspension and uh they can't be replaced on the roster so it's gonna be really interesting oh. to see how this plays out in major league baseball i was trying to figure out a parallel on things that would like increase spin to be like an illegal advantage <laughs> for opera but then i was like well a lot of the female singers have to wear corsets and that kind of increases spin it's true but i'm trying to figure out what illegal substance we could be using in opera to like give people a better advantage I feel like if you're doing like a really avant-garde production, you can really just kind of like put them on a centrifuge and just spin them around real fast. <laughs> there are these people who use these sprays that numb their 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 voices. That the numb chloroseptic. Their... Yeah. 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 Mm. Like if they're feeling swollen, you know, just like ignore the pain, just sing through it. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the opera police coming in and busting like, you know, Isabel Leonard to call another singer back to be like, sorry, ma'am. You got that chloroseptic. You got to go. Your cover's Let me on. smell your breath, Islen. <laughs> Sorry, Isabel. Sorry, Ryan Lochte. Good call. Bad call. On Opera Box Score. All right. Good call, bad call. Oliver, what have you got for me? Oh, well, in the next edition of The New Yorker, which is available online now, um, Alex Ross celebrates a return to live opera with his new column, Stravinsky's Plague Opera including a glowing review for Ali Opera's Oedipus Rex, which stars mm -hmm. Janae Bridges, Morris Robinson, and friend of the show, Russell Thomas. And in the same column, Alex Ross praises, quote, young director James Dara. Drink. <laughs> they, we had to get that name in somewhere, the show. Uh, and the inventive production and cast of Les Enfants Terribles by your Phillips glasses at, <laughs> yes. at Long Beach Opera. So check out that column and kudos to our friends, uh, Russell Thomas and James Dara. Matt Cummings. I don't know if anyone but me has watched The Morning Show on Apple TV+, Plus, but you definitely should. The cast is absolutely insane. It's, I I mean, Billy Crudup in it is, like, my far and away my favorite, but, like, how can you pick Is there a new season of it, one? or is this, like, it, an it, there's, old... There's one coming up in the new okay. season, and Juliana Margulies is joining it, so I'm okay. double excited. But I've been watching it just this past week, and, you know, it really hit home thinking about a couple of episodes that we've done, because it's based so much on, like, what went on at the Today Show and in the Me Too movement. And, you know, some things just stay relevant. Ashley Hardgrave. Well, if you don't have Apple TV, find somebody that's got an HBO Max login and start watching Hacks. It is amazing. <laughs> Gene <laughs> Smart is a national treasure. Also, I want to turn the storyline of Hacks into an opera. Number one, because I think it would be great. And number two, because I don't think enough operas are set in Las Vegas. So start watching Hacks. <laughs> Librettists and composers, call me. Let's get this project going. 
Well, since uh, George isn't here, I can finally do a good call. Unfortunately, I don't have one. That's <laughs> it for this week's edition of America's Talk Radio Show about opera. Our announcer is Norm Waddell, who can be found at normwaddell.com. On Facebook, search for Opera Box Score. On Twitter and Instagram, we're at Opera Box Score. Help us deepen our bench of listeners by liking and sharing our social media posts. Email us your hot takes at operaboxscore at gmail.com. Subscribe to our podcast on Stitcher or just favorite our show on Apple Podcasts. The view and opinions expressed on Opera Box Score are solely those of the show's creative team. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this show without the express written consent of Opera Box Score is totally fine because George isn't here to stop you. Our creative consultant is Oliver Camacho. Our audio and video, video editor is, well, me. Uh, from your co-hosts Matt Cumming and, and Ashley Hardgrave, I'm Weston Williams asking you to continue the conversation about opera as you wash the glitter out of your hair. We're back with an all-new show next week when you get more opera headlines, more hot takes, and more pro-athletes going gay, hopefully. Join us. <laughs>